One of the most famous and unsolved problems in computer science is whether p equals np. The equation is simple, p equals np. However, the consequences of answering this question are profound. At its core, this question asks whether problems that are easy to check, for example, verifying a solution is fast, are also easy to solve, for example, finding the solution is fast. In formal terms, p refers to problems that can be solved in polynomial time, while np refers to problems for which solutions can be verified in polynomial time. If p does equal np, it would imply that for every problem where we can verify a solution quickly, we could also find the solution quickly. This would fundamentally alter many areas of computational theory, particularly cryptography, algorithm design, and complexity theory, since many problems thought to require exponential time, like certain encryption schemes and optimization problems, could potentially be solved in polynomial time. Conversely, if p does not equal np, it would affirm that there are problems for which finding a solution is inherently more difficult than verifying one, validating our current understanding of problem difficulty in computational theory. Let's explore the definitions of p, np, np-complete, and np-hard, and break down their significance in both theoretical and practical contexts. Let's start with what is p. In computational complexity theory, p, or polynomial time, refers to problems that can be solved by an algorithm in time proportional to some polynomial in the size of the input. Essentially, the amount of time it takes to solve a p problem grows at a rate that is manageable as the size of the input increases. A problem is in p if there exists an algorithm that can solve it in big O of n to the k time where n is the input size and k is a constant. For example, suppose you want to sort a list of numbers. A well-known sorting algorithm like merge sort has a time complexity of big O of n log n, which is a polynomial time complexity. As the input grows, the time it takes to sort the list grows at a manageable rate, so sorting is in p. A deterministic Turing model is a theoretical model of computation that follows a set of rules, the algorithm, and produces exactly one result for any given input. For problems in P, a deterministic Turing machine can solve them efficiently with zero ambiguity in the process. But what is NP? Let's consider the class NP, which is non-deterministic polynomial time. NP refers to problems where, given a candidate solution, you can verify its correctness quickly in polynomial time. Importantly, NP does not require that the problem itself be solved quickly, just that once you have a solution, checking if it's correct is very fast. So a problem is in NP if, given a solution, you can verify it in polynomial time. This is often referred to as the verification problem. For example, consider a Sudoku puzzle. If someone gives you a completed puzzle, you can quickly check whether the solution is valid by verifying each row, each column, and subgrid in constant time. This is a verification step, and it takes polynomial time relative to the size of the puzzle, typically big O of n squared for an n by n grid. A non-deterministic Turing machine is a more powerful theoretical model where at each step the machine can make multiple guesses about the next step. It can explore many possible solutions at once, simulating all possible paths in parallel. While it may take exponentially many steps to find the right path, once it does find a correct solution, it can verify it very quickly. Now what is NP-complete? An NP-complete problem is a special subset of NP problems. These are the hardest problems in NP. So these are problems that, if solved efficiently, would allow us to solve all NP problems efficiently. In other words, they represent the most difficult NP problems in terms of time complexity. So a problem is NP-complete under two conditions. One, it must be in NP, so the solution can be verified in polynomial time. And two, every other problem in NP can be reduced to it in polynomial time. It means that if you can solve one NP-complete problem efficiently, you can solve all NP problems efficiently by transforming them into this problem. For example, the traveling salesman problem, or TSP, is a classic NP-complete problem. Given a set of cities, the problem asks for the shortest possible route that visits every city exactly once and returns to the starting point. While checking if a given route is the shortest is easy, you can just compute the distance and compare it, finding the optimal route is computationally challenging. If you can transform any NP problem into an NP complete problem efficiently, you can solve all NP problems. But this might be confusing for you. Why does transforming any NP problem into an NP complete problem allow you to solve all NP problems? 
Let's break this down. So NP problems are problems for which if you are given a solution, you can verify quickly, in polynomial time to be exact. But finding the solution in the first place may not be easy. So NP complete problems are the hardest problems within this NP group. If you can solve an NP complete problem quickly, you can solve any NP problem quickly because of reduction. So what does it mean when I say reduce a problem? Reduction means transforming one problem into another in such a way that solving the new problem gives us a solution to the original problem. So if we can reduce any NP problem into an NP complete problem efficiently, for example in polynomial time, it means that we can take any NP problem and turn it into an NP complete problem. So imagine you have two devices, a calculator and a supercomputer. The calculator is a device that can solve very simple problems, but it has limited power. The supercomputer can solve the hardest problems efficiently, but it's much more powerful than the calculator. Now suppose you have a problem that can only be solved by the supercomputer. However, if you had a calculator that could transform your problem into a format that the supercomputer can understand, you could use the supercomputer to solve the original problem. The calculator represents reducing a problem to an NP-complete problem. You take a problem that might seem hard for the calculator, which is the original NP problem, and transform it into a form that the supercomputer, the NP-complete problem, can handle. Once you have transformed the problem into a format that the supercomputer can understand, which means reducing it to the NP-complete problem, the supercomputer can efficiently solve it. So in other words, having a fast solution to the NP-complete problem would automatically give us a fast solution to all NP problems. Just like the supercomputer allows us to solve anything, the calculator can transform. So what is NP-hard? The term NP-hard refers to problems that are at least as hard as the hardest problems in NP, but they may not themselves belong to NP. That is, NP-hard problems might not even have a solution that can be verified in polynomial time, but solving them would be at least as difficult as solving the hardest NP-complete problems. So the formal definition is that a problem is NP-hard if solving it is at least as hard as solving any NP-complete problem. However, an NP-hard problem may not necessarily be an NP because it might not have a solution that can be verified quickly. An example of an NP-hard problem is the halting problem, which asks whether a given program will halt or run forever. This problem is not in NP because it's impossible to verify a solution in polynomial time, but it is NP-hard because solving it would be at least as difficult as solving any NP-complete problem. The big question is, does P equals NP or not? At this point, we arrive at the ultimate conclusion. Does P equals NP? If P equals NP, it would mean that every problem that we can verify quickly, or NP, can also be solved quickly, or P. If P does not equal NP, it would mean that there are problems in NP that are fundamentally harder to solve than to check. This would confirm the belief that some computational problems are inherently difficult, even if we can verify their solutions in polynomial time. So to sum up, P are problems that can be solved quickly in polynomial time by a deterministic Turing machine. NP are problems where, if given a solution, it can be verified quickly in polynomial time. NP complete are the hardest problems in NP, such that if you can solve one quickly, you can solve all NP problems quickly. And NP hard are problems at least as hard as NP complete problems, but may not even be an NP.